sorry to announce the late arrival of this podcast. This is not due to a broken signal box or need of a line, but the simple fact that we moved house this week and everything's still in boxes. We apologise for any inconvenience this has caused you, but frankly, whatever that is, it's been a double sign for inconvenience for us. Anyway, normal service will now be with you. Hello, welcome to Richard Zog and Gareth Jones on Speed. They have changed the name of the programme already to include my two valuable contributors and close personal friends. This is part of our new contract. Uh, yeah. It, uh, it's very sweet. It's going to be a major redesign of the logo. Yeah. It's uh, unwieldy. And, it's, and I've got to read that line that your lawyers made me read. <laughs> Richard Porter appears courtesy of Sniff Petrol and BBC's Top Gear. However, the opinions expressed no, no, by no, Richard no, Porter... Wait, uh, no, 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 no. No? Sniff Petrol, Top Gear... Pantene shampoos. Oh, sorry. And yeah. Coke Zero. Uh, sorry. I, the I, great taste with none of the sugar. I'll have something. my. I'll have my lawyer. Have you noticed but about not Coke the choice Zero. of a new dinner? Coke Zero. Why do they advertise Coke Zero? It's because obviously it's aimed at men, but it's like yeah. they might as well have the strap line. It's Diet Coke you can drink without being labelled a big bender. That's, <laughs> that's yeah, but it's it is, still just sort of it's slightly the same fizzy coloured stuff. water. It's the same ice. stuff in a black can. They might as well have a fighter jet on it and a Porsche Carrera GT. It's just man Diet Coke. Give me a good strong coffee any day. We've started well. We're already off cars. Go on. We're, we're, let's bring Z- it back on track. Zog appears courtesy the Porsche Motor Company and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that about covers it. Actually, Zog sent me a, a rather fine photoshopping of his Porsche in the race trim that you're going to drive to Le Mans in this year. You've got your oh, sponsor my spon- stack. My, my, my sponsor stack, yeah, yeah. Down the uh, side of the door. <laughs> Illy Coffee is top of the list for sure. Yeah. Uh, ran- Ranchilio mach- coffee machines, and uh, they're the only ones that matter, Starbucks really. That's it. That's it. No, no, please, no, no, you wouldn't, please, you wouldn't go wouldn't, to the Starbucks. Cafe Nero on the high street, that's, that's mm. my top tip. Or maybe no. a Costa if you push. If you pushed, yeah. yeah. Here's one, the sound of someone from the VAG Porsche Audi Empire sneezing. (laughs) Schuffenhausen! Thank you. This is already... It's descended into nonsense, isn't it? It's gearing up to be a textbook show. We've (laughs) managed to drift off cars completely within about 30 seconds, and and now we've got puns and jokes. So Let's bring it back to sensible cars. Should we do a car review? Go for it. Okay, here is a sensible car review of an Audi by Gareth Jones on speed. I've just spent a week driving an Audi Q5, the 3-litre TDI. Now, just so you've got it in your head, I know you're car nuts, so you'll, you'll know straight away. Audi Q5, like the Q7, only smaller. That's all you need to know, really, I suppose. Have you driven any Audis recently, Richard? Not for a while. I drove an S5 briefly. I thought that was quite nice. Proper car. It was all right. Yeah, it was okay. It was it was sort of civilized yeah. and pleasant. For that, the last time I drove was an R8, which is is a wonderful car. And you yeah, tell yeah, me yeah. about that because you drove that around the Top Gear test track. I did, yeah, yeah. And you said, "By God, it was even better than the Gallardo." Yeah, though. unbelievably good. Uh, no, we had we didn't have a Gallardo there. We had a we had a Murcielago. Sorry, Murcielago. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Which was yeah, it was really big and silly, and, and it's wonderful, and it, it's everything you want from a Lamborghini. And it was fantastic. But as actual car to drive round, as a layman, the R8 was just superb. Really, really properly. We like Audi, car. not yeah, least of all well, because well, of their Le Mans heritage. Yeah, but even apart from the Le Mans heritage, which is a, of course a, a recent thing for them. I mean, you know, before that, it all seemed to me that they embodied a certain kind of deep engineering cool, which is quite hard to come by. Do you know something I found out the other day? You know the slogan "Vorsprung durch Technik," which yeah. they introduced in uh, the eighties. Yeah. First of all, it was a slogan originally used, I think, by NSU. No, really. Part of the. The, the auto house. union, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was written on the wall of one of their factories, the Neckerallsalom or something. Neckerallsalom, yeah, yeah, Neckerallsalom, no, Neckerallsalom, which uh, there is a room. It was an old NSU factory, and Audi were building cars there, and their UK advertising director was looking around that factory and saw this faded slogan on the wall and thought it sounded fantastic nice. didn't even know what it meant at that point arts department or something yes exactly <laughs> please wash your hands <laughs> and it was only later they did some market research and they found that people thought that audi was an italian make no so one really? of the weird research findings that Curious. came back that, that oh. there were a certain number of people who thought audi were italian maybe because the name 
Sounds well, a bit you know, right. ending ending a lot of Italian so things ending he high. said, look, we'll yeah. do this German slogan. And apparently there was massive resistance to it from the management of Audi in the UK and in Germany. They went, oh, don't do that, you know, it's just silly. We, you British don't like Germans, yeah, do you? Yeah, no one's going to understand it. What he does said, it mean? you've got it to make this point, yeah. because the whole thing is that people perceive, particularly in the early 80s, Italian cars as being badly made, and, and the Germans have a better engineering pedigree, yeah. and people like them for their sturdiness, because they've started buying Golf, so why not try and sell them a, essentially a posh Golf by playing on its Germanness and reminding people it's not Italian? And that's where Vorsprung und Def Technik came from. Which it's I think never. they've dropped yeah. now, haven't they? They don't say it these days, sure. Anyway, they, I, yeah. I was going to just pick you up on something. We, we like right. Audis. We like Audis when they're good. Yeah. I think the, the, the R8 is a storming car. The RS4 oh, uh, is an unbelievable car. Yeah. And I was out the other night with a colleague of mine from Evo, and he'd come over in a, uh, the new S4, which has got a V6 rather than the V8 of the old one. Yeah. And he said it's mega, really just, just a properly I, I, nice sorted car. Whereas the old one with the V8 had that classic Audi problem where the engine slung out in front of the front axle, and it just feels like you've got this anvil dragging you wide in all the corners. Although a five-cylinder anvil is always, always quite a cool a thing. A five-cylinder anvil is nice that's fine, but when you get the full V8 anvil, it's all the thing about the RS4, they, sort of, yeah. you know, they were shaving millimetres off bits of the engine and the bulkhead and stuff to go, try and get the engine just a little bit further back. It's a problem they've now got round because the A5 and the new A4, the whole engine is, is shunted right back and they've flipped the gearbox round to try and get everything behind the front axle to uh. make them handle a bit less sort of front heavy. Mm. We digress. But yeah, I was going to say I don't like all Audis because I think what they do is they make that catastrophic mistake of confusing a hard ride with good handling uh-huh. when exactly the opposite is true. Uh-huh. And that's why Lotuses always ride quite well. Yeah, because uh-huh. as, as, as the sage Leonard Setwright, the uh-huh. the late Leonard Setwright, of just up the road from Stoke New, well from Stamford Hill, he was. Oh, was just he? up the road, yeah. Len the pen, yeah, yeah, local boy, uh, legend. Yeah. But, where, yeah. but where he famously once said, "What's good for road holding is good for ride," and vice uh-huh. versa. And, and it's true that you know cars that ride well. And I'm having this problem at the moment with my Mitsubishi Evo. It has a very hard ride, and although it can go very very fast along country roads, if they're bumpy, you're clinging on so much to try and keep it in vaguely the right direction. The steering writhing around wildly. That it's actually not very easy to drive fast whereas a Lotus Elise for example just swoops along a road because mm. it, the, the suspension is absorbing the bumps at the same time as dripping to the, yeah. to the corners Suppleness. one of the most expensive cars in the world one of the most valuable classic cars ever made is an Audi did you know that? Yeah. The, an auto, oh, the auto union, union racer yeah, yeah. Yeah. 30 or something I forget what its model was but a real pre-war 1930s beautiful Avis ring well, no, the, period the, the old 16 cylinder one mm. uh, it looks the, like a big silver cigar yeah. designed by Ferdinand Porsche mm. oh well there you go Nichols yeah. which is the right response actually yeah. All right. So um, you've been driving a Q5. Yeah, I want to get to review in a minute. About the Q5, because I'll be honest, I have paid so little attention to it. Before uh, we get to that, uh, does anyone remember the Audi 50? Yes, which was the Volkswagen Polo. Is the correct answer? Just checking. It was originally launched as the Audi 50. What before it was a Polo? It was was the Audi 50. Yeah, yeah, that came out first. But it wasn't released in this country, was it? It was only available in Europe in left-hand drive. Yes. What a shame, wouldn't you like the little Audi 50 these days? Because they're about to make the little Audi A1, aren't they? Yeah. Sort of mini-sized thing. Yeah, yeah. That'll be quite chic, I think. I like the idea of that. I'll sell a bundle of those, yeah. But I'll tell you everything I know about the Audi Q5 after this. I'm upper class. I look down on him and on him. I drive a 24-year-old Volvo estate that I inherited from my father. I'm middle class. I look up to him, but down on him. I drive a seven-year-old Ford Mondeo that I bought outright. I'm working class. I don't lag up to either of these two blokes because I've got a brand new BMW 3 Series that I borrowed 30 grand to buy. Credit what? Gareth Jones on speed with sniff petrol. Classless. I've been putting off my review of the Audi Q5 because the truth is, I still don't know what to think about it. My policy has always been... You don't need a soft rotor 4x4. Four four. No one needs one. You need a sports estate. That's the right thing. You know, that's, that's a much better idea. As you guys well know, I basically hate all these tarted up 4x4s. Four <laughs> and that's about as much as I really know about that car. Apart from the fact that I had a look inside, it looks like an Audi inside, mm. looks mm. lovely. 
and now I'm going to shut up. See, the reason I, I asked for this car, I only tend to choose cars to review on this programme that I'm interested in. There's no point getting a car that I'm not interested in and then talking balderdash about it because I don't care about it. But I really care about the Q5 because I think it's gorgeous. I, I think it's the single most attractive off-roader. For, it's not an off-roader. For SUV. Hang on, I'm, going take, I'm going to take my, my headphones off yeah. and I'm going to go to the window and have a look at it. Have a look, come on. Outside. I'm going yeah. to have another look. Yeah, come on, sure. you can have a look. I think <laughs> it's by far the most attractive. It's better looking than the Range Rover Sport, which just looks like a brick that you want to punch for being so arrogant. It's all right from this angle, I'll be honest. It's nice on the top. It's okay. <laughs> Can't really see much uh, from the first floor. It's got a full-length sunroof, I can see it's that. It's got... <laughs> Really, it goes quite far back. I tell you what... Gareth Jones will be bringing you all the best car reviews from the first floor window. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of competition for anyone who's listening. It's an Audi. Guess what colour it is? <laughs> is it silver? Yes. yes. Yeah, it's all right. It looks like an Audi. But I think when you stand next to it and you oh, see no. them on the road, it's so gorgeous, I well, think. You see, I'm sorry, I'm coming back. I'm still coming. Because what I'm what back. what is it up against? You back? I'm back. What, what is it up against? You know the, the Freeland. It's not up against the Freeland because I checked this here with this magazine. It, it's a bit more expensive it's than more, Freelander. It's, it's a bit more expensive. <laughs> but it, you know, it's also up against the X3, which I think is a dreadfully that old fashioned not a, looking that's not car. A good car. That is a, a, actually a genuinely awful car. And what's that horrible looking fuddy duddy Honda? thing that is... Um, oh, CRV? That's it. No, they're way cheaper. That's the thing. I was quite surprised because I've willfully not been paying attention to the Audi Q5 and I've started seeing them around. Mm. It was quite weird when I turned up here this evening and, and, and there was one part outside on press office it, number plates because I've been seeing them. I, I drove up north this weekend, gone, and I, I, I saw loads of them. Suddenly yeah. they've sprung up yeah. everywhere. And at A5s. I saw loads of A5s yeah, around. Yeah, Where there'd been none, now they're at... Dozens They're of them. all over the shop. Do you know what I think it looks like? I think someone's taken a sort of a net shopping bag, one of those sort of net vegetable bags that you get, sacks, yeah. and put in four massive baking potatoes and then just sort of picked it up like that. It has that sort of four square what, set. the A5? No, this this car, oh, the right, Q5. Okay. It looks like Quattro. It looks like it's nailed down to the floor with four huge wellies sticking to the floor. You know, it really does look nailed. Well, this is the sort of stuff that car designers spend all their time worrying about. Yeah. You know, that, I'm it's sure the that's par- It's the main part of the I'm battle. not sure they got a net bag and got some baking potatoes <laughs> in it. Although, you know your car? You know your, your Lexus yeah, Sora? Yeah. Do you know how the, the shape of that was was first come up with? It came up with? Come up with someone come took up. a flute and crossbred it with a banana? Yeah. <laughs> Close. They got some kind of plastic bag or a, a condom or something and filled it with modelling plaster. And then before the plaster had fully dried, they twisted it and put it onto an overhead projector to get a sort of soft, organic shape. And that was their first inspiration to draw. Really? Yes. Wow. Fact. Toyota. Wow, I didn't know went that. Went like bonkers it. around that time, which would have been, I guess, sort of yeah. late 80s. Because yeah, yeah. also they had the MR2 at that time, the second generation yeah. MR2, with the, with the sides that were sculpted to look like um, Flo Jo's thighs. I remember that. Now I remember that as a fact. They, were, they, went, they went mad. Whereas now yeah. they've sort of they've gone off a bit. And oh, just the Auris, was... which is designed to look like... Look like a the smell of death. <laughs> so the, can I have a look at that piece yeah, by the way that comes so, with your car because uh, I'm just I'm intrigued to know how much this costs. So I was attracted to the Q5 because of the way it looked. It looked great. <laughs> the distinctive bell of TV Violet Berlin. Violet Berlin. <laughs> did you like the Q5V? Uh, you didn't get riding it, but did you? No, but it looked good. It looked like a normal car. <laughs> That's what <laughs> you said yeah. about it. And inside it looks, like Zog said, like a normal car. It looks just like an Audi, doesn't it? Yeah, it, 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 like a great interior. I have no problem with the interior. Ooh. But what have you seen? Well, I've read- seen the fact that this is... A- Rich is reading the, the spec list for the car. Your Go press on. car here, if you ordered all these options that are on it, the basic yeah. price is 33, well, nearest damn it, 34 grand. Yeah. That's for the basic Q5 3 litre TDI Quattro SE S Tronic. 33 yes. grand. Yeah. However, the press car that you have outside yeah. is worth, near as damn it, yeah. 47,000 of the pounds. That's quite a lot of money. How pounds. do you get 14 grand worth of money? Oh, well, the well, full length glass well, sunroof well, is worth a grand. Okay, first of all, it's the got Bluetooth's 400 quid. Let's go take it from the top with these yeah. expensive ones. 20 cool. inch uh, alloys, mm-hmm. 1,175 pounds. Technology okay. pack, disconcertingly vague. I don't know what that involves, but that's, that's what, what, almost two thousand pounds. What that is? That's a pack that of, of words. technology. Yeah, it's just a big bag of iPods in, in German. In German, it says Wolfsburg. It's just loaded with David Technique. Hasselhoff. 
<laughs> um, Hoff, if you don't uh, mind. Audi parking system advanced. Is that, that, that a self park thing that we had in that Lexus um, the week? Uh, it's got a camera at the back. It's got sort of guideline assistance. I haven't spotted whether it would park itself. There were too many buttons on mm. that dash. Okay, now here's where it gets cheeky. The hill hold assist, you know, that thing you take your foot off the, the yeah, foot brake, brake and it'll yeah, hold it for a minute, which... Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. It comes as okay. standard in a lot of cars now. My, yeah. my little old smart rose dad had that like three or four years ago. How much is uh, it? They, they, well, they charge you £45 for that. £45! <laughs> okay, you throw is. it in for free! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> then you get to the big stuff again. Audi Drive Select hyphen full package. Makes what? your penis the, bigger. What? No, 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 no. Well, Alan McNish comes around and drives oh, it for you. Little yeah. uh, I, I, you know, I, I might pay fourteen grand for them actually. Yes. Adaptive cruise control. That's quite handy. That, but that's uh, one thousand seventy-five pounds. Door actually, mirrors, folding and auto dimming, two hundred eighty quid. Uh, well, hang on, back yeah, yeah, back yeah. The adaptive cruise control is great on that car. It's as good as it was in the Lexus. It yeah. works great. Yeah, yeah, it's sensitive but not oversensitive. Mm-hmm. You can set the distance. It's intuitive. It's got a very clear on-off. However. The column for the cruise control, I didn't even know it was there until 200 miles into the journey. It's hidden down behind. You've got to, oh, hang on, what's this? Oh, there's another thing down here. Well, of course, your yeah. Audi centre would teach you how to use it when they you do delivery, so I'm sure. It should be intuitive. Here's, here we get yeah. some more cheapy options, but I think are quite cheeky. Load liner, 60 quid. Yeah, yeah. Net partition, £90. Yeah, what that does, oh. net partition, it stops your children going to porn sites. <laughs> Welcome to your Audi Centre, sir, and this is the new Q5. Please, get on in. Oh, yes, well, these doors feel very sturdy. <laughs> well, that's Doortronic, sir. It's a £580 option. Oh, right, well, lovely interior. Yes, yeah, very nice steering wheel. Ah, well, that's VDCS, Vehicle Direction Control System. It's actually an option, £1,070. Oh, but... Without a steering wheel, how would I be able to control the car? I mean, the front wheels would just go wherever they want it. The front wheels? Yes, down there, you know, front wheels. Oh, oh, the Audi Forward Vehicle Support System. Let me guess, they're an option and they cost 900 quid. <laughs> Don't be silly, sir. They're £32 each. Now, here's one that annoys the ass off me, which is high beam assist. Do you know about this? It started on BMWs, I think, had it, which is the... Auto-levelling. No, no, it's, it's not got that thing where it detects it oncoming around. cars and it'll allow you dip to have down. a high beam on and when it detects uh, lights it oncoming, does. it'll yeah. go back to, to dip yeah. beam, which is a £100 option. Now, if you need that, you shouldn't be driving! <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. Interior light package? What? It doesn't have lights in it. God, I hate to go around to an Audi designer's house. <laughs> it's pitch black in here. Yes, I haven't specified the interior light package yet. That's 155 quid. Also, advanced key for £490. Well, I'm still not sensing 13, key, 14 like, well, grand know, F, of extras F here. I'm, sharp, you know, minor, mm. diminished. That's a real uh, like a jazz key. Yeah, yeah, jazz, jazz, key <laughs> jazz key. A jazz, jazz key on a car. Hey, that was a bit... <laughs> it would take you like five times as long to get in and then... And you, you have a really complicated, different really complicated route you home every day. Yeah, yeah, inject and, heroin into it. And when you flip it, it doesn't go chip, chip. It goes chip, scooty up, chip, up, 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 Uh, (laughs) that's jazz and and I'll I'll stop just going through an options list this is riveting podcasting but uh, the final thing on the list is mobile phone prep hyphen low is that for men low 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 I dialed up Paris Barry White I I call Violet and Violet's voice is hello (laughs) Gareth that's 440 quid you should have spent some more and got the mobile phone treat phone work to treat lots of buttons lots of buttons more buttons than on the Lexus There there were two roller buttons on the steering wheel the Audi equivalent of iDrive excuse me I don't know what it's called Audi Drive that's got the joystick and control with a nice isn't it? so that's it well done yeah and then four outer option clicks it's like having a four button mouse thing going mm. on as well wow, it's a load of buttons I mean it worked it took me a, a while to get used to it but then oh actually hang on shortcuts this is quicker it, so it addresses the problem that iDrive does 27 mm. clicks just to open your window is that why you need high beam assist though because you're yes. too busy concentrating Chris on those buttons. Turn the dial to stop your jazz key playing along with some freestyle music on the radio. <laughs> Something I really liked about the car, really clever, it's got SD slots mm. in the dash mm. for what do you call SD cards. What are they? What are they? Oh, memory, memory disc card, cards, you know. memory cards. So you can put your tunes in that way. Yeah. And it's got its own memory. And so when I got in the car, it's like, wow, 
There's, what, ten albums on here? Oh, great, oh, the new right. Killers album. Oh, the Kooks album. Well, they, they send it out with a with Yeah, music. with a bunch That's of music, which was great. And oh, so I, oh, by the way, it's a brief diversion. You know that awful Mitsubishi Evo that I've got at the moment? Now, yeah. It's a hard disk stereo. But I weather the dreadful iPod connection to usually just listen to tunes off my iPod. But yeah. And it's quite embarrassing, this. I only found out this week that you put the CD in, and because it's a hard disk thing, it, while it plays the CD, it records it as well, so that you it never have to put it. it back in again, which is nice. quite clever. Ooh. But obviously it's not my car. It's going back to Mitsubishi at the end of this month. Now, the CD I was listening to was actually something that came free with all the newspapers we got in the office, and it was Alan Bennett reading Winnie the Pooh, <laughs> which I was driving home listening to, because I really like Winnie the Pooh, and it was yeah. lovely. Sniff but, Petrol listens to Winnie the Pooh, now, so and he's got no children. No, I've got to go and get the manual out to find out how to delete it because uh, I got home and realised the stereo's recorded it so when it goes back to Mitsubishi they'll go well, what's he been recording into it oh just one disc it's Alan Bennett reading Winnie the Pooh for a minute I thought you were worried about the copyright implications but no you're just embarrassed yeah, I'm just, to I'm everyone embarrassed reading... I don't know what it says about it, except that I, I'm not ashamed to say I love Winnie the Pooh and I like Alan Bennett and it was really really nice Christopher Robin these are the wrong sorts of bees it's wonderful but I don't want it to record my CDs I've got to find out how to delete that now so I got in my Audi Q5 yes <laughs> sorry and drove round the corner and I got to the first corner and almost crashed it it turns in like a Lotus Elise. <laughs> really? It was such a surprise. And it's not anything other than this electric steering and dynamic properties. You know, it changes its setup all the time. I turned in, it's like, whoa, short wheelbase, turns in. It was like really surprising. Genuinely, I nearly crashed it. It was such a surprise. Mm. I didn't expect it to be able to do that. That was great. And then you get onto the motorway. And it seems with speed, it eases down a bit. It's nowhere near as sensitive. So I think the steering on this car is the best thing. Mm. Absolutely brilliant steering, really. You feel you could chuck it. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, it's, it's achieving Even something. High centre of gravity. It's, you know, it's, not a, it's not a low slung car. The steering is good, but the massive downside, you can change the laws of physics. Whilst the ride in the longitudinal plane was good, actually. Oh, that's quite good. Surprising. You mm. know, ooh, uh, the lateral stability was appalling. It jiggles left and right in a way that if you were going to buy this because you just had kids, the inside of your £46,000 car would be spattered with child vomit. I think I saw that on the options list, isn't there? It's <laughs> it? just a bit it, caught. It, honestly, it sort of teeters left and right. And I remember being driven around Dubai in a Porsche Cayenne. Mm. a few years ago and that thing teeters diagonally front left back right you know it goes incredible pace but it does that and this felt a bit like that but a bit more laterally mm. and because of its titanic performance this thing is very quick I couldn't give you the figures but it pings well, actually, off. Have, have you got them there go on it, it seems to be very quick Although um, it was flawed at very low speeds. You touch the throttle, nothing happens. Bit more throttle, nothing happens. And suddenly, my God, I'm doing 70. You know, it was very hard to drive at low speed. Yeah. And then elastic you away. Like the turbo took a while to spin everything up. But once it was spinning, you could really drive with it. This car is a baby Cayenne. That's what it is. You don't need a Cayenne. Get one of those. I mean, yeah. you don't well, need a Cayenne yeah. anyway. Well, but no, this just in, uh, 062 in 6.5 seconds. There you go. Quick, That's it. it was, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at the cost of, I bet the 0 to 30 time mm. is rubbish. I and think. It, it really is from 30 to 60. Well, it's it also because it's an automatic, right? So, yeah. uh, and I remember driving a few years ago an Audi All Road, the old shape one, which had a twin turbo V6. I love the All Road. Well, I've always hated it since the the only time I've driven this, and it was one of the very early ones, and it had an automatic gearbox, and it had a V6 twin turbo. So two turbos have got a spool up. It's a diesel, yeah. so the throttle response is always a bit soft. Yeah. And it was an automatic, and I, yeah. I thought it was actually dangerous. If you're on a yeah, roundabout, you go, oh, there's a bit of a gap, put your yep. foot down, and then you've got two separate things, or three maybe, mm-hmm. all trying to take up the lag. I experienced the same with this. I have to say, at very low speeds, it's like, Rubbish, what? Yeah. Come on, no, what? suddenly it kicks then, in, and wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's no, the same problems but you know the ride on the motorway was delicious in town it was appalling and I tried all the various settings you got three settings comfort auto and dynamic and um, whatever the settings it was still the same what else did I not like about it I didn't like the fact that there was no room for my left foot because of the huge no crap tra- transmission well there was just no room for it because the huge transmission tunnel it shoves your left leg over a bit so mm. it was like hang on there should be a bit more room than this and here's the thing I chose the Q5 because I hate the Q7 I do I, re- I hate the Q7 more than I hate the X5 the BMW X5 which I really dislike yeah, yeah. Uh, and I hate the Q7 because it's just 
It's not for Europe. If it was in America, I would love it. Great for Americans. In Europe, you don't need it. In Europe, it's a Lincoln Navigator. And I thought, Q5, oh, lovely, cute little car. Until I got it, it's not that small. You made a guess on the length. You checked it. Well, well go just, on, in just, Zog measurements. Well, it was four and a half paces. It's uh, 4.6 metres long, that car. Hey, that was not bad. Now, the Lexus is 4.8 metres long. How long is a Range Rover Sport? Do you know? Do you know? No, no. It's just under 4.8 metres. This right. car is not much smaller than a Range Rover Sport, which is a shocker. Mm. And the whole reason that the Q5 looks like a little car is because the Q7 is such a leviathan that this takes those features and makes them look so much smaller. Mm. And it was a shocker that it was such a big car. Would I have one? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know because I don't like the idea of having a big, tall car. I don't want one. I'm on an all-road. I like low cars. I don't go off-road. This car wouldn't go off-road, really. It's got big, fat tyres on it. It would be rubbish off-road. But having driven it up to Derbyshire and then to Yorkshire, to Doncaster, it showed me something on the motorway I've never seen before. Because I don't think I've ever driven such a tall car as this. I thought this. you were going to say two girls kissing. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I haven't seen that. That must be great. What is that? No. <laughs> it's dangerous. It showed me what was in the fields either side of the roads. You see over hedges. I swear, that's a journey I've done dozens and dozens mm, of times yeah. recently, and I'm fed up. You get in this car, you go up the road, you go, oh, look at that. What, was that? Oh, mm. what are that pretty little bridge? So I've got this theory, people who drive these cars, drive them for the wrong reason, and B, are more prone to have a crash than anyone else, because they've got to be distracted by things that the rest of us just have not seen. Two girls kissing. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but you could get a fairly recent and nice second-hand Range Rover V8 diesel for 46 grand. Yeah, you could. You so, could. Ooh, if you want to sit up high. I just don't really go for any of these oh. urban sort of four by four car, strap a kitchen whatever. chair to the roof and persuade a friend hey. to drive you along. And solve that. There you go. You might see two girls kissing in a flat. <laughs> uh, hi. I'll stop mentioning that. But now. if I had a choice between a Range Rover or the Q5, I'd take the Q5. I would. I just love the way. It's really? Yeah, I love would. Yeah, really? I, I, I would. Really? Yeah. Really? I've not driven the Range Rover. Well, I'll drive a Range Rover and then come back to me. All right, I'll have to get one then. Go on. I will. It's the only way I'll know. But I have to say, a big part of this Q5 made me want to like it. You know what you say about the Cayenne is a. I would say it was a terrible idea, brilliantly executed. Mm. You know, it's a, it's a fabulous answer to a question that nobody should ever have asked in the first place. I think this is sharing some of that Zuffenhausen, Inglestat, Audi, Porsche, VW family concept thing. That, well, it was again, actually going to go further than that because there was a small Porsche 4x4 planned. Based uh, on this. Called the, I can't remember what it was supposed to be called. Mm. Called something ridiculous. Like the Rockster or something. Mm. And mm. apparently they've cancelled it now. But that was just going to be, yeah, Porsche 5. Yeah, Q5. It, so it, who knows that Porsche it's basically, had an input into it at the early stage. Hey, and then it, it, it. Well, there's always been a relationship between Porsche and fast Audis. You know, mm. the RS6, the RS4 are basically Porsche, aren't they? In many no, ways. The 94 was really going to be yeah. an Audi. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. This is a Porsche in many, many ways. And I like it for that. I dislike it for the fact that it's so tall but yeah I'd have one <laughs> I don't know would I, I no I wouldn't have one no, yes I would no you wouldn't no, yes, no, you, you wouldn't. can't decide you can you I, that's the trouble I no, hate wouldn't. being in this position if you know the answer write to me Gareth <laughs> Jones help me choose whether I like this car or not because I honestly don't know <laughs> the public votes uh, yeah and I, oh no no don't make it like the X Factor that, where they decide for me that's it I'll play out on a piece of music which I've got a choice what should I do shall I play in the Buzzcocks or shall I play a fall? What do you think? That, no. that, that fall one is something special. I like. Well, the fall one that, that I, I listened to this morning, and I was able to go off and make a sandwich and brush my teeth, and I think I drove to work and came home, and it was still playing. Yeah, we know that it's impossible to get Gareth you know, to do the songs at three minutes, which they should be. <laughs> yeah, you know, Where's your we, we know that. That's, gone. Come on, <laughs> I like the buzzcuts one. Play the buzzcuts one. I want the fall one. I'm I, I tell you what, I'm going to justify playing the fall one. Right, I'll edit it so it's a little bit shorter. Okay, yeah? three minutes. The right, reason I'm minutes. playing it is if you're listening to this on a bus right now, and you're thinking, oh god, it's another nine minutes to my stop that I get off at. Don't worry, Gareth's got a song that's going to go. <laughs> 
<laughs> the reason this song is on is this, this program now? Is this, are we, are we doing it's going to be the fall. I got in the car this Audi, and one of the songs that was on the hard disk was a song by the fall. Believe it or not, so, yeah. So I don't know if Audi is, yeah, I don't know if Audi is sending out or someone else has digitised something in a compilation. I thought, oh, the fall. I used to love Marky e. Smith. I'm going to do a song in the style, and it came out a bit like the fall, a bit like the Gang of Four. I also took the car to Yorkshire, where my dad was brought up, and drove down the road my grandfather used to live. And I'm proud of being a Welsh Northerner. So you know, you're taking your time that you could be playing the song. I could be playing the song. You've got two and a half minutes left of the fall. That's it. <laughs> this is motoring for entertainment and pleasure by the Gang of Four. Well, it's me, really. Say goodbye, fellas. Bye bye. Bye bye. In an F1 season where costs are coming down. Everybody's cashing in. Nakajima's crashing out. Buttons on the up. Buttons on the button. The USA of A is on the way. Though they won't use that as a name. Ecclestone gets the blame. That's Bernie Ecclestone, TM. Motoring for entertainment to pleasure. Motor racing, transport and pleasure. Motoring for entertainment to pleasure. Motor racing, transport and pleasure. Oh. The merits of the station wagon are often underestimated. Better handling than an MPVPV or Spectrum's SPV. A load capacity almost as good as a lorry. Notice that I didn't say truck. Good for families, good for business, yeah, yeah, it's an industrial estate, yeah, yeah, and I've got an industrial estate. Yeah. Fashion victims in their cars with the capability, able to scale sheer faces of car parks outside Sainsbury's, Tesco, Aldi. And most importantly of all, Iceland. And they don't stop to consider the consequences of being a fashion statement and making statements like VC should have Burberry cloth and Prada should sell paint trim. Don't condemn them, taste is subjective. But we should subject them to our taste in return. Ford Cortina Mark III's with vinyl roofs. Take that. And I do mean Robbie, Gary and Mark. But not the other two. Motoring for entertainment and pleasure. Motor racing, transport and pleasure. If you are looking for unclogged motorways and open roads with flowing lines as driven by Troy Queef when he spanks it and spanks it again. For all your road requirements, hit the north. Motoring for entertainment and pleasure. Right, and if I open the tailgate... Audi boot closure solution, £400. And look in the boot... A Highline integrated storage area, £680. What optional things am I going to find? Good Lord, it's two girls kissing. Lesbiatronic, £2,350. Mm. 
Contact the show on speed at garethjones.tv. Get lyrics, pictures and more information from www.garethjones.tv or subscribe for free at the iTunes store. Gareth Jones on Speed is made by Whizbang. Woo! <laughs>